Uh, the doctor called and left a message on my phone one afternoon. He says, well, I'm sorry to tell you this this way, but uh, the test was positive and you need to get in here. I mean, when you hear that you have cancer, it, it just freaks you out. You know, you're like, oh my God, I'm, I'm going to die. I'm going to die soon. He recommended surgery. He says, well, I can do it. He says, if you don't do it, you know, you have five years to live maybe 10. Then you go into this, I would call it like a netherland, a nether world, where you're not sure about anything. You're not sure if you're going to live. You're not sure if you're going to die. You're not sure what to do. You're not sure when to do it. You're not sure who to do it with. You're not sure who to tell and who not to tell. I was diagnosed in August. I was supposed to start teaching in September. My brother was diagnosed in December, the same year. He had lung cancer, and it spread, and it was inoperable. I was dealing with mine, my brother was dealing with his, and he chose a different path than I did. But you know, it's weird because here are two brothers, both with cancer, one dies, one lives at the same time, and you know, it's, it's a, it gives you an awkward feeling. I mean, you're grateful to be alive, and yet, you know, you wonder why or how or you recognize that it could have been the other way around. That experience changed my life entirely because for the first time in my life, I had to decide, consciously decide whether or not I wanted to live. You know, that's something we take for granted, isn't it? But I actually had to decide because if I wanted to live, I was going to have to fight to live. I could have done nothing. A lot of people do that, and they die. At age 24, I was diagnosed with stage 3 breast cancer in my right breast and my axillary lymph nodes. I'd gotten in a fight with my boyfriend, and I was really angry, and it was really late at night, so I just went in the shower and my pinky had just grazed this area on my chest that didn't feel normal, you know, and you just, you freeze like that shock of terror. And you're like, oh my God, is that me? Is that me? Is it me? It couldn't be me. I couldn't have cancer. I couldn't have cancer. Why could I have cancer? My doctor felt it, and by that time, a second lump had showed up in my armpit. I met with an oncologist at Cedar sinai and she said, yeah, you have stage three cancer, you're gonna have to have a double mastectomy and five and a half weeks of radiation and 18 weeks of chemotherapy and a reconstructive surgery. I'll refer you to a plastic surgeon and you should have surgery, um, what was it? It was Friday, she's like, you should have surgery on Monday. And I was like, okay. <laughs> I'm like, this is a big deal. She's like, yeah, you can't wait anymore because when you're young, cancer grows very rapidly. I remember when they were wheeling me out of the surgery room into the elevator, the two guys that were wheeling me were just like laughing and talking about their day and their girlfriends and I'm just laying there like, wow, this happens so often. Like these guys are just not affected by this anymore. Then two weeks after my chemotherapy session, my hair fell out. I was in the shower and it felt like I felt like there was a bug on me or a spider or something. I just freaked out, you know, and I slapped my, slapped my shoulder and I saw it was a lump of hair. And that was another one of those moments where my heart just stopped. Like the hair thing was the hardest thing, you know, at first it was the breast and then I was like, okay, I'm going to get new boobs that are never going to sag. I'm never going to wear a bra again. This is fine. I can get used to this, but not having hair to me, it was unattractive. It was cold and it was like a cancer flag. By the end of my chemo treatments, I wasn't even wearing wigs anymore. I bought really, really big earrings, like big sparkly diamond earrings and like huge hats. And I just kind of walked around like, you know, like a fashion queen. Coincidentally, you know, the year I had cancer, I worked more than I had like my entire time in LA. I had done a commercial, I did two films, and um, I was working and producing on my own short about cancer. And I you know, I got inspired to write this film because I was, I was on Melrose shopping with my friend and I ran into these two guys we haven't seen in forever. And I'm wearing a wig and I'm super thin and this guy doesn't know that I had cancer. And he sees me and he's like, oh my God, Alicia, you look great. 
I haven't seen you in so long. Like, are you working out? You know, and he introduced me to his personal trainer. He was like, this is my personal trainer. And I'm like, oh my God. I'm like, yeah, I'm on the best diet ever. Hey, Phil, you look good. No, you look good, gosh. I haven't seen you in months. You look great. Been going to the gym? Huh? Looks all different. <laughs> yeah, something like that. Really? How'd you do it? You know, every time I turn around, there's another miracle happening with this film. Everybody wants to be a part of it, and everybody wants to help out, and everybody believes in the message. Everybody is capable of creating something beautiful and helping someone else. This will be my sixth year participating. here at Ben and Jerry's raising money for the American Cancer Society's Relay for Life. I'm the team recruitment chair so I've been out getting all the teams walking up and down the street just to get everybody involved because it's such a great cause. Cancer has changed my life in many ways. It's made me grow as, as a person. I, I compare it to like a, a cut. You know, you've, at the beginning, you bleed and it hurts a lot. Yeah. With time, it heals, but it's there. The scar will always be there. Mm -hmm. You'll never forget. Every day you remember, but you learn to live with it. Her last days were filled with a lot of love around her, and um, I, I think she knew that. I read my prayers and it says that uh, even though they, you, they can't be seen, they're, they're there with you. They know what's going on and they're, and they're with God. So that consoles me a lot. Threat that it has and how fast and easily it is for people to get it, um, it really sucks because you're just constantly reminded of that every day and that it's fatal. A lot of things just missing from the picture, you know. It wasn't, I wouldn't plan on him leaving for like another, you know, 20, 30 years. My faith is what has got me through everything. You just never know because cancer metastasizes and it can leave one portion of your body and go to another portion and start all over again. So, I don't know. Right now, knock on wood, I'm good and I hope to stay that way. You can have, you know, all the best medicine in the world, but your friends is what really, really helps. And just laughing and just having fun and knowing that this is just a glitch in, you know, your life plan.